Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Cavill Knife, or Cavill Knives, Kamasu, designed by, I know I'm gonna mispronounce his name, Tigwas. I, yeah, it's my best bet, my best guess. Sorry about that. Uh, this is a designer that you guys probably are at least semi-familiar with, even if you don't realize it. There's a number of knives out there that were designed by him. I think the most striking outside of this one would be the Kawananagare. Uh, I think it's CMB made knives, the, the Cree blade. Yeah, um, really interesting. So this guy has uh, a special feature outside of the fact that it's just kind of a wild knife in general, right? I'm sure you guys can tell exactly what I'm going to do here. So I saw pictures of this, and I'm sure you guys have seen them too. If you didn't see my unboxing, you've seen the pictures and thought, that's pretty cool. Is it actually that dramatic? I mean, are they really telling the truth with that? I could have, honestly, I could have like really built up the theatrics with this and like done this before I started the video. But I want to I want to show you guys what's involved with getting it to actually look this way. So um, now that we've got that done, I'm going to close this and show you guys what we're actually looking at here. Wowzers. Um, yeah. And now I could sit here and charge this thing up and really can, you know, get it to, to glow even crazier. But those pictures that they have on their website are not, it's not a joke. Sorry, it's having trouble focusing here because of the, the darkness. But no, it's not a joke. <laughs> it actually, it actually glows like crazy. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm looking for my um, light here. Uh, somebody in the comment section from the um, unboxing explained that it's, it's essentially like a resin that they, it's like a glow-in-the-dark resin that they put in or mix in with that carbon fiber, which is what those inlays are. That's really cool. Now, um, this is a, uh, a Chinese-made pocket knife, and honestly, I'm not sure exactly who the OEM is, but it feels like one of the premier OEMs. Um, that we all know and love, right? Um, so the quality overall, what I'm saying here is very, very good. Um, there are, there's no goof ups or anything like that. This is clearly ultra high end production Chinese manufacturing. And I'll be happy to go over this with you guys. Thanks so much to Cavill Knives for sending this in. It should be available. I'll link it right down below. You guys can check it out. Just understand, you know, if you don't find it on their website or on Amazon, you know, you might want to you, you, you can also Google that, but I will link a couple of places where it might be in stock. It just depends on when you're checking it. Uh, thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and measure this knife. It is definitely larger than I thought it was going to be. The overall length here, eight and a quarter inches. I really thought it was going to be like seven and a half. Uh, blade length is actually 3.75. If you go to the back of the frame, pretty much anywhere you measure, it's almost 3.75 inches. And the cutting edge is 3.65 because of the curvature there. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you see here can be found in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the AD10 uh, and the AD20.5, you can see here it's closer to the overall length of the AD10. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Pair 3? You can see this is a, a pretty much a PM2 sized knife. Not small, not XL, but not small. And then finally, up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. How's the action on this knife? It's a front flipper only, which is a little bit risky because it's like if you're going to do that, it's got to be pretty good. A front flipper, while not new, it's still a much newer thing than like a regular flipper or a thumb stud opener or a thumb hole, right? So I would say the majority of people out there are just not used to them. Um, and whenever I hand off a front flipper to somebody who's never experienced one before, it's always a little bit of a process, right? So if you're going to do that, it's got to be a really good front flipper. Personally, I always prefer that a front flipper is coupled with a secondary means of deployment or another means of deployment, right? This doesn't have that. But let me tell you, that's a really good front flipper. They really got that tuned right. It's sticking up enough to where it's easy to get leverage on it. The access to the lock bar is great. Look at that, how they've ledged that right there. Really, really great. It does come down and kind of catch your fingernail there. It's You're, you're not actually in the safety of the sharpening toil, you are catching a bit of that edge. 
but it's not it's not bad. It's still it does exactly what you want it to do, right? It's you can flip it, you can disengage it with one hand, turn it, and it'll almost fall shut into the closed position. This is this you know in combination with the uh, seating of the hardware, the inlay work, all of that. This is what tells me that the thing is likely made by one of the familiar Chinese OEMs because it just is exactly, you know, that. It's designed well and it's executed well. And obviously there's a lot here that's kind of novelty, right? But it is absolutely functional and it is made, you know, in, in a way that suggests that someone can actually carry and use this knife for years and years and years and it'll be just fine. The action is great uh, considering it's just a front flipper. Let's do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco pair of three. It's honestly about the same. Uh, the titanium is heavily chamfered, but not contoured. That's okay. Uh, let's do length and height up against the PM2 and the pair of three. Closed, honestly, it's pretty compact. I mean, it's not a super tall knife. It's kind of like a, a skinny banana um, or a very long baby <laughs> baby carrot. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it's uh, about maybe as long as the PM2 close, nowhere near as tall as e either. Even with the curvature, honestly, it's going to carry pretty well for how much knife you're actually getting. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I'm pretty sure this is all going to be, or a lot of it is going to be T8. Yeah, T8 for the pivot. These body screws are also going to be T8, absolutely. And then we have a hidden uh, screw for the pocket clip, most likely a T6, and then a T6 lock bar insert screw. Um, really very minimal hardware. This will be very, very easy to disassemble. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's measure the blade stock thickness real quick. Blade stock thickness of the Kamasu coming in at 120-ish thousandths, not a thick blade. And then finally, let's go ahead and weigh it. What's the blade steel? It's M390. And, you know, immediately when we see, you know, okay, you got kind of a lesser known, kind of a gimmicky design, Chinese OEM, they're probably hitting it low, right? Actually, according to their website, they hit this at 61 to 62. <laughs> The blade apparently has a ceramic coating on it, but that, I mean, holy crap. Like the, uh, the, uh, Rockwell hardness is actually up there. So there you go. That's according to their website. I do not have the equipment to test this, right? I can't do it. Um, so I'm just repeating what's on their website. Uh, so take that information, do what you will with it. But that's pretty cool. It's kind of risky for a company to post that and have it not be true because in 2023, People will test it. We have plenty of people in this community who have the means of testing it to find out. So, yeah, um, that uh, right there is a little bit of, um, you know, it's not a guarantee that it's actually the case. But like I said, it would be risky. A company that's got the means of making this stuff is probably going to be pretty familiar with the community, pretty familiar with, um, you know, how it works. If you're, if you're going to claim something, you better be able to back it up. So, yeah. Uh, that's what it says on the website. That's pretty cool if that's actually true. But anyways, let's go ahead and weigh it. We have the glow-in-the-dark carbon fiber, titanium, and M390 for the materials. We also have a titanium backspacer and titanium pocket clip. So weight uh, coming in at uh, about what I thought, 4.1 ounces. Not bad, especially considering you have almost a 3.75-inch blade. That's pretty good. Okay, meat and potatoes time. This has a really wild look. It's not the first time that we've seen like an S-shaped, you know, obviously Sinkovich does a lot of S-shaped or, or Persian style blades with the curvature following, you know, from the frame, uh, from the back of the frame to the tip of the blade. I rarely like this look. I don't like Persian blades. I don't like big curvy this or that. But this knife, the whole thing is just following such a specific, almost like, sci-fi fantasy weapon theme and i think it's the cutouts in the handle and how they kind of right like the they kind of almost follow suit with the um uh the inlays <laughs> in the titanium frame uh, it's a combination of everything that i really like i also like this really decorative pivot look at that 
That's neat. I, I like that a lot. Um, I mean, it's all these are all very premium materials, right? Um, I, I I very rarely see glow in the dark carbon fiber, and even more rare, I think, is blue uh, glow in the dark carbon fiber. You, you just you just don't see it. Um, I, I think that's very very cool. If you're not if you're not like big into like glowy stuff, then you're not going to care. But I know there's plenty of you out there who are like that. You know, it's neat if it glows in the dark. Um, so I, I just think that's neat. I love that it's actually mixed with carbon fiber as well. Overall, you know, this is a love it or hate it aesthetic. Um, but either way, even if you don't like it, I think we can appreciate what went into this. This is a designer knife for sure. Uh, they obviously put the design before the utility, though the end result is a knife that will function. And, you know, this area right here is probably obviously the most unsafe area. There's not a lot stopping you from running your finger up on. You'll run into that uh, sort of 90 degree angle where the, the blade starts before you run your finger up on the blade, but you definitely have to be cognizant. Uh, the blade absolutely will slice, it will poke, it will cut, it will do all of those things, and there's a pretty big open ergonomic profile. So hanging on to it, you know, or controlling the blade isn't going to be that much of a problem. Obviously, more utilitarian um, designs exist, but here the designer specifically set out to make something aesthetically striking uh, and then add elements to complement that, and that was successful, right? Whether you like the design or not, he succeeded in doing that. <laughs> this will definitely result in a, 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 you know, a larger than normal emotional response from the average person. Um, a lot of times that's the goal, right? Um, so uh, this designer, you know, alongside knives like the Kawan Anagare, if that actually is how you say that, he's succeeding in getting his name out there for sure. And I like that, right? And this is one of those crazy deals where I this if you were to describe this knife to me, the, the, the shape of it, I would say I don't like knives like that. But now handling it and, and playing with it, it's just, you know, it's one of those things that I talk about all the time. You won't until you will, right? You can say that something is not for you or you would never buy this or that or you would never, right? You won't until you find a version of it that you will, that you will go for, right? So this is the, the whole design goes against everything that I enjoy aesthetically, but the way that it's all put together is actually pretty cool. It has me pretty excited about this. So it's just, you know, it's funny how, <laughs> it's funny how the knife world and just the world in general does that to you. Pretty neat. I like little elements like this carved out area in the flipper tab, right? Um, they could have otherwise just left that flat or blank, and they didn't do that. It's a, it's a good combination of busyness and, you know, areas that don't need to be busy are, are not, right? Um, I, I, I just very much enjoy that it's not too far over the top. It's still pretty classy, at least the way that I define it, right? That's pretty subjective. But I think you guys get what I'm saying. It's actually pretty comfortable to hang on to. I mean, there's not... This general shape is basically just a shape that the hand can hang on to. But because of how much chamfering there is right here, it kind of uh, it, it, it doles the fact that this is a hard 90 degree drop off. And it actually ends up being pretty comfortable. I think it's just because there's so much room. You honestly, I have quite a bit of room to choke back if I want to choke up. I just like that freedom. Um, and that combined with the fact that it's really easy to manipulate for a flipper, a uh, front flipper, and uh, the access to the lock bar is also really good. It's just it's just a good combination of things, right? Normally, you'd look at a knife like this and think, yeah, it's really neat, but it's, I doubt it's really comfortable to manipulate or, you know, whether you're actually carrying it around, using it, or you're just sitting on your couch flipping it, right? Watching knife content like this. I mean, half of you are sitting there with your newest knife flipping while you're watching this video, right? So... But designs like this are not typically the most comfortable or easiest to manipulate, and this actually is. It's pretty cool. We have just a simple, it was like a blasted finish. Like I said, the website listed as a ceramic coating that's on this, which I, I guess will help uh, resist scratching and stuff like that. Um, M390 is not a tough composition. Every now and then you run into people who are confused by this. If you didn't know, M390 is not a tough composition. It is a composition that yields very, very good edge retention when it is properly heat treated and also has very, very good corrosion resistance. But oftentimes with high hardness for the composition comes low toughness. Uh, and that is the case if you didn't know that. So do not expect something like this, even when M390 is heat treated properly, to be somehow magically durable. That's not, 
It's all part of the multi-directional teeter-totter that is knife steel composition and the rules change, not really the rules, but the outcome changes depending on the composition of the steel, right? And then we all we have to fit all of this into a folding knife package, right? So anyways, titanium backspacer, nice kind of semi-reflective finish on the titanium that does look good. There's no lanyard hole, who cares? I mean, some people do, but I don't. Pocket clip, very simple, titanium milled clip. It's gonna be a little bit pinchy. There's not a lot of room to push your pocket seam underneath that, but if you really wanna carry it, you'll figure it out. It's just not gonna be the most convenient thing in the whole world. Nice smooth surface to uh, you know kind of glide over. It's interesting that they, probably for the pocket clip, it's probably why they did the inlay this way on this side. I mean, if it was kind of sitting like halfway on top of one of these inlays, which do stick up just a little bit, might be kind of a bumpy in and out experience, but no, it's gonna be nice and smooth. Most of that, well, a lot of that frame is actually hidden underneath that scale, which I think is good because the, the the lower the pressure on the lock bar, the easier it is for the front flipper to do its job. So that's really, really nice. The frame is wide enough that you can do that. Um, there is a uh, stop pin that's located internally and attached to the blade. We can see it right there. So it's riding on channels carved into the titanium on either side of the blade. That's nice. Two points of contact, one on each titanium scale, versus a traditional stop pin where it's just the blade contacting a single pin. So I like that. Uh, it, uh, there's a benefit there to lock up stability, but the action can stay nice and smooth, right? I don't like that. Um, the uh, I can see here that this is actually wanting to pull itself off center, and it's probably because of how much I'm flipping it. I don't remember seeing it off center. What I'm going to do real quick, and this is fine. I'll tell you why this doesn't bother me. This, By the way, if you're new, that's not a reason to send your knife back. There's nothing wrong. As the pivot backs out, the blade will become slightly off center, and usually, yeah, that's exactly what was happening. You can turn the pivot, and the blade will come right back to center, right? Now, uh, to prevent this from continuing to happen, you need to get yourself some 242 Loctite, which is called blue Loctite. That's confusing because it comes in a red container. Right, right. It's kind of like eight hot dogs and ten buns kind of sort of, not really, but it's just, it's just, it's just as infuriating, right? Do not buy red Loctite, buy blue Loctite. I like knives that don't come with Loctite because then I can Loctite it and I don't have to, you know, screw around with uh, whatever they decided to do or however much Loctite they decided to put on there, I get to control that, right? So get it to the uh, you know action or whatever that you want and then add yourself uh, a little bit of Loctite. The action is still very, very smooth in here, but you can see it's going to you know continue to back out until I Loctite it, which is, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. It's more to the convenience of the end user. Um, but uh, anyways, Lockout completely and totally solid when the pivot is properly screwed down. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Oh, it really wouldn't surprise me if this was Reich. That's, I don't know why. I It just kind of feels like it's like it's Reich. Detent, real nice, nice and clicky. No uh, detent lash or anything like that. Uh, this has quite a bit of extra stuff going for it, but it's specific, right? This knife will absolutely be worth it to people who are looking for something different, but also functional. If you like to kind of, you know, split the difference there. It's a functional knife, but it's not necessarily perfectly geared towards optimized utility. There's a lot of designiness in there, but executed very, very well. If you like glowy stuff, if you like a bit of an unorthodox look, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, you're definitely going to like this, especially if you love front flippers. This looks like something that would could have been in the movie Dune, right? Um, or Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it just kind of has that look. Um, I really like this. Now, uh, it does have all the stuff that you would like to see in a knife at this price point. But whether or not it's going to be worth it is going to be up to the individual. It's largely based on preference. But as far as what I expect to see... It, we're, we're generalizing here, but what I expect to see when we approach this price point, this does bring that extra to the table. So the base price on this is $298, and that's for the blue one. For some reason, the gray one is priced at $317. Uh, okay, whatever. You can get this for as low as $298. I'm not super upset about that. I think, honestly, I think that's fine. This this is bringing it. And 
the cherry on top is they're hitting the freaking M390 at 61 to 62. There's to there's plenty of um, knives out there that uh, are you know extremely utilitarian in the overall design, and where they miss the mark is not heat treating M390 in my opinion correctly, right? So it's like, well, okay, you can save yourself 50 bucks, but then you get a subpar uh, blade heat treatment. Now, you know, most people would be quick to point out that geometry plays a much larger role. The nice thing here is that we've got a geometry that I think accentuates the potential performance of M390 pretty well. It's a pretty thin, curvy blade, right? It'll slice and cut, as you saw earlier. I mean, all I did was cut paper, but it, it does that just fine. I'm not upset about the price. I think this is pretty cool. That being said, this is obviously a very polarizing design. It's not going to be for everybody. And the elements here that are contributing to the total cost are, again, they're, they're elements that not everybody really cares all that much about. It's going to be a pretty small population of people who are really, really super pumped about this. So for that reason, I'm not going to say this is recommendable to everybody. But if you're into this stuff, you are going to love this knife. And the $300 you spend on it is going to feel like $300 well spent. So for you guys, I can absolutely recommend it. For everybody else, eh, this is pretty specific. It's niche, kind of niche within a niche kind of thing. So, and obviously $300 is still a lot of money, no matter who you are. So anyways, that's going to be pretty much it today. This is really fun. Uh, I, I very much enjoyed this one. This is a really cool night. Please. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.